Welcome back to the Grand Circus Git Basics video series. This is the video on working with remote repositories. In Git, a remote repository is another version of your project hosted somewhere on the network or internet. At Grand Circus, most of the time our remote repository is hosted on GitHub. When you create a project, initialize, add, commit, and push, a version of your entire project is copied out to GitHub's online servers. That copy is the remote repository for your local repository. Here's what we'll be covering in this video. Primarily, we'll focus on getting a deeper understanding of linking to and pushing and pulling with remote repositories. Then, to finish up, we'll look at cloning an existing GitHub repository. Let's start by adding a remote GitHub repository to the local repository I already started. This is the same thing we do for all deliverables and labs, but let's look deeper at what's going on. I'm in my local repository. I already initialized it. I have one file and two commits. You can visualize it like this. The circle is my local repo, and it contains a timeline of two commits. Now I've also just created a brand new repo on GitHub called remotes-demo. This repo starts out completely empty, I'll represent it as an empty circle. We want to synchronize these repositories, but at this point, there is no connection at all between them. To make this happen, there are two steps. They are the two git commands recommended by GitHub here. What do each of these commands do? The first one is git remote add. It creates a link between the local repository and the GitHub one by adding the GitHub repository as a remote. The second one is git push. It follows the link we just made to copy the contents of our local repo up to the GitHub repo. Let's run those commands now. The first command includes the URL of the GitHub repository. This tells our local repository exactly which repository to connect to. You'll also notice the word origin here. We're actually allowed to have multiple remote repositories for our local repository, and each one has to have a different name. In general, we only have one, and the standard name is origin. So pretty much you can always just use origin here. How do we know if that worked? Well, generally with git, no news is good news. If the command doesn't print anything out, it probably worked. But let's check. You might remember the command from the previous video to see what our remote repositories are. git remote-v. There we go. Our repository is set up to push and fetch from the GitHub repo. That's the first step. The link is made, but if we go to GitHub, we'll see that the repository is still empty. We now need to copy the entire contents of the repository over using git push. The first time, we must include all the details. git push dash u origin master. You see the word origin again here. That's telling it which remote repository to copy to. We still have to specify it, even though we only have one. Master is the name of our one and only branch. We'll talk about that in another video. And dash u is the magic option that tells git to remember all the other stuff, so that from now on we can just type git push without having to type origin master every time. With git push, we've just copied all the commits from our local repository over to our remote. The two are now fully in sync. If we look at GitHub and refresh the page, we can confirm that the files made it. Once you have the remote repository established and the repositories in sync, let's look at two scenarios for how to get them back in sync when something changes. The first scenario is quite common. We pushed two commits to GitHub. But what if we make more commits? Let me make two more commits. I'll change this file, add it, and commit it. That's one commit. Now I'll repeat to create a second commit. Change, add, and commit. You can see from my git log that I now have four commits locally, but on GitHub there are only the initial two commits. The picture now looks like this. We need to sync these additional two commits over. Syncing commits from local to remote is done with git push. Thanks to the dash u flag earlier, 
Now we literally just need to run git push and the commits are copied. If we refresh the page on GitHub, we'll see that all four commits are there. And there are my latest changes. We can visualize git push like this. It makes sure any commits that weren't already synced get copied over. OK, that's pushing. Now what if we need to synchronize in the opposite direction? This time, suppose there are additional commits on GitHub that I don't have locally. This could easily happen if I'm working on a team and other people are pushing to the same GitHub repository. When this happens, we need to copy the additional commits down to our local repo using the opposite of git push, which is, of course, git pull. On the command line, just type git pull. Again, thanks to the dash u flag we used earlier, it already knows where to find the commits. Excellent. It pulled down the changes. Now we have five commits locally as well. Here's the new commit. In this video, we started by creating a local repository and copying it up to GitHub. But what if we want to do the opposite? What if we want to get a copy of an existing GitHub repo on our computer? There are two options. Let's get this very cool project repository. When we look at the repository on GitHub, there is a clone or download button. When we click this button, it gives us a URL and also has a download zip button. Download zip is our first option. With this option, all we get is the latest files from the repository. We do not get a local repository and we do not get all the commits and history. The second option is to clone the repository. This will create a local repository already set up with the GitHub remote and all the commits copied over. A clone essentially gets us back to the same state we had before with the two fully linked repositories. This is definitely the way to go if you want to do more work with this code base. In order to clone, first navigate in your command line to the folder where you want to create the local repository. But do not create the folder for the repository. Git will do that for us automatically. I'm going to navigate to this projects folder. Now type the command git clone and copy paste the URL from the clone or download button on GitHub. Run the command. Notice that it did create a new folder inside my projects folder with the same name as the GitHub repository, very cool project. I should cd into that folder now to explore the repo. Git log reveals three commits. That's the same as our shown on GitHub. And if we list the files, we see the same three as on GitHub. Lastly, let's check the remotes. Yep, it's linked. We're completely set up with synced repositories just like before. We can start pushing and pulling. You can clone and pull from any repository on GitHub. It doesn't even have to be your own. However, in order to push commits to someone else's repository, they will need to give you permission first by adding you as a collaborator. That wraps it up for this video. We looked at creating a link with a remote repository. If the local repository exists first, we link it using git remote add, then push the commits. If the GitHub repository exists first, we copy it down and link it with git clone. Either way, once the remote link is established, we keep the entire commit history of the repositories in sync with git push and git pull. Thanks for watching. There's just one more video in this git basics series, the video on history and undo.